Hey and welcome to our video guide. My name is Ned. Uh, today we're going to learn how to build a simple searchable chart. So if you have a need to see a visual representation of your data, this video is going to be perfect for you. I will also point out to some customization options along the way. So as we're building the chart in Caspio, we're going to be able to see how those changes affect the front end. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's dive in and let's see how we can build out this chart in Caspio. So once you're inside your Caspio account, all you need to do is click on create data page. This is going to launch Caspio's point and click data page wizard. Go down to charts and then you'll see tons of options on how you can create charts based on your use case and also what type of data you have inside your table. Now my data set contains 500,000 entries. Uh, it's mostly sales data. We have regions, we have countries, item type, and then over here on the right, you'll be able to see sales figures such as units sold, unit price, total revenue, total cost, and total profit, which you get from subtracting total revenue minus the total cost. So now how can we plot this data onto a chart and make it searchable? So again, once we're back inside the data pages, I am going to select a stack column chart. Because I want to plot the series for region inside each column, I am going to select stack column chart. We're going to hit next. For my data source, I'm going to choose my sales table because that's where all of my data resides. And let's give this a name. Let's call this net profit by region. As for my style, I can choose some preloaded styles that we get from Caspio, or I can fully customize my own style in terms of color palette. I'm just going to choose blue. And then for my localization, I will stick with English, which is one of the default styles that you get inside your Caspio account. Now, if you are password protecting or authenticating this chart for your users, eventually you're going to select restrict access. But for today's video, we're going to keep it public, open to anyone, because this is just simple sample data, fictitious data. There is no actual data that's sensitive in any shape or form. We're going to hit next. So now in the wizard, it's asking me, do you want to be able to search data inside the chart? If you choose to go with the filtering data based on predefined criteria, now you're building more of a static chart. So you can see the chart and the chart will basically tell you what you want to see every time you load that chart. So if I hit next, let's say I only am interested in seeing my data for a specific region. I will select the region field and maybe for date ordered. So if I hit next, now for my region field, I can say I want that to equal to Europe. Now my chart will only display data for that region. Also for order date, I can say maybe this year or current year. And we're in 2024, so it's going to give me the data for 2024. Once 2025 rolls around, then it's only going to display data for year 2025. You don't have the ability to search, in other words. It's just going to give you um, the data based on the filters that you set up manually here. However, in today's example, I would like to have a search form. So we're going to go back a few steps and select the search form. I want the results to appear underneath the search form and I want to display my results on the initial load. So we will hit next. And now for my search fields, I would like to include my region field and perhaps order date. Of course, you're welcome to include as many search fields as you want, depending on how you want to, you know, hone in on your data and be able to see exactly what you want inside that chart. We'll hit next. For my region field, I would like this to become some kind of a drop down. So for form element here, you're going to notice we have a drop down option. For source, I would like to include both custom values and lookup table. And then for display, I will simply say search any region because by default I want to be able to list all my data on the chart until I manually select a specific region. Make sure you delete the value because you want to be able to search all the data across the entire table and then for lookup table it automatically knows to select my sales table and it selects the region for me. Now in the advanced tab this is perfect this is exactly what I want people to see. Now, if your lookup table is based on your main table, which it is in this case, Caspio knows to automatically optimize and create a lookup table on your behalf. That way, when you're searching data, 
it's much faster performance wise and you don't have to worry about any additional lags. So it automatically creates a lookup table for me called region and you will eventually see an extra table here in this object to the left. I will say yes. And then I want to be able to say continue next element on the same line because I want to put my order date next to the region field. So I want everything to appear in the same row. Now I could leave it one underneath the other, but to maximize on space, I always like to create multiple columns. In addition, maybe I want my label to be on top of my field. So this label that you see here will appear on top of my dropdown for region. Order date is treated a little bit differently. We want to include new criteria, which creates two additional criteria underneath our field. For the logical operator, I want this to be set to and because I want criteria one and criteria two. For criteria one, we're gonna simply say in my label, we're gonna say date from to indicate this is the from field. And I want the comparison type to be greater than or equal to. Now for my second field or my second criteria, I will simply say less than or equal to, change my label to date and rename this to two. So now we know two fields, one is the from field and one is the to field. In addition to that, for criteria one in the advanced tab, I want to say continue next element on the same line. I'll put the label on top, label on top. And that's really all we want to do. Now all three of our fields are in the same row, region, from date, to date. We can hit next to continue. And now it's time to set up the chart. The first thing that you'll notice under chart settings is you can add a title and a subtitle to your chart. To me personally, I think having both is a bit of an overkill uh, unless a specific use case calls for it. I always like to include just one label above my chart and I like to usually include that as the subtitle. So total profit by region. The reason why I don't add it as my main title and you'll notice that when you're building your charts is because the main title is going to be bigger than the subtitle. And I think the font size for the subtitle, it's a little bit nicer in a lot of use cases. However, even if you add it as a title, you can always go to the styles object and modify the height of your font or the size of your font. The width and height of the chart is by default set to auto. You can also change that to a fixed width and height. Meaning that if you have a set to auto, if you change the width of your screen, the chart will conform to the size of that screen. All the components will change based on the width. And typically I will set that to auto. You can enable zooming if you'd like. Uh, zooming allows you to select a specific part of the chart and then zoom in on it if you'd like. Enable chart action menu. So if you select this checkbox, this brings up the menu here in the upper right where you can print the chart. You can download it as an image if you'd like. We have display legend. If you say, go ahead and display the legend, you will be able to see the legend underneath the chart. And then this is self-explanatory. You can have vertical grid lines and horizontal uh, grid lines. In my use case, I have the horizontal enabled. So you can see that I have these horizontal grid lines across. If I had vertical ones as well, then you will be able to see more of a grid. And then you can also add a legend title uh, once you display it. So if you add some text here, you will typically be able to see that text right over here above the legend. Going down to the next setting, for the elements, we have the data source setting. Now you can create the series from data in a single field as this um, image illustrates. If you have a single field and you have all of your data inside that field, in that column, uh, choose this particular radio button. However, if you have all of your data as separate fields, then you can use the second radio button to create that series. Now, because my regions are all in a single column, as you can see in my data set, I have one column and all my regions are inside that column. I will select the top radio button. For my X axis, this is going to be the date field, the order date, and I want to be able to group date by date rollup, and I want this to be month. So that way it groups all of my data by month. In my live example, you can see what that looks like. I'm grouping all of my data by month, Let's go back. Formatting, you can format the date however you want. I'm not going to make that change. 
And then for the series, we're going to select the region field. That way, when I have my stat column chart for each column, I'm basically stacking all the regions within each column. So that ends up being my field. For the y-axis, we don't really need to make any changes here. Uh, you may want to just simply format because I know this is going to be the net profit. So we're going to change this to currency and change the digits after the decimal to zero and hit OK. And finally, for value, I will simply select total profit and I want that to be a sum. You can include other aggregation options here if you'd like. I'm not going to do that. We're going to hit next. And then if you want, you have some chart sorting options that you can, uh, you can sort your data based on however you want in the fields given to me in this dropdown. Now, I'm not going to make any changes. I'm simply going to click finish to save. And that is how you create a data page in Caspio, a chart data page that allows you to filter. If I hit preview inside Caspio, you will see what it looks like. And essentially, it's the same exact chart, just using a different style that I've applied to this data page. I have the ability to search by region. We have our two date fields and we have all the data plotted onto a chart, which is exactly what we have inside this live example. If I hit search without using the zoom capability, it brings back all the months and it brings back all the data. And now within each column, you're going to be able to see the region and the total for each region. And that's how in Caspio you go about building charts very quickly. Uh, it's all point and click. I didn't code anything. You simply set up your options and your settings. You click finish to save. And in the end, what you're going to do is deploy that chart, grab the embed code, copy it, and paste that code into any website builder of your choosing. Caspio is compatible with many website builders today, such as Webflow, Squarespace, Weebly, WordPress. And even if you're hosting your own HTML files, you can paste this code into your HTML document, publish your site, and you will be able to see how it seamlessly embeds in that portion of your website. For a more sophisticated setup, if you'd like to build something like a dashboard where you see multiple charts, like in this example right over here, keep in mind that Caspi allows you to embed these charts and tabular reports and pivot tables in a single web page to give that effect of having a dashboard. If you want to learn how to build multiple components on a single web page, just like in this example here, check out the link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a step-by-step -step video that I did on how to embed multiple data pages and have this dashboard effect that's pulling data from your Caspio table. And you can see how quickly everything pulls. If I reset and go back to any region and hit submit, this is filtering through 500,000 entries. That's how quickly, I mean, split second to get my data uh, shown up on the web. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video on how to build the chart in Caspio. Have fun and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>